Welcome to MacroCode and today we are going to learn about objects and classes. So in OOP, uh, procedural programming is about writing procedures or methods that perform operation on, on data. Well, in OOP, it is about creating objects that contain both data and methods. So today our main focus is on, is on classes and objects in C sharps. Objects in C sharp. So what are classes and objects? So classes and objects are the two main aspects of object-oriented programming. We call it OOP. So majorly we deal with classes and objects in OOP. So a class, so majorly a class is a template for creating objects or is a template for objects so in op so in op in op a class is a template for creating objects and when you talk of a, a template so you can think of a template as a a blue is, is, is kind of a blueprint for actually creating objects. So from this template, we will use it to create a lot of objects. So when the individual objects are created, they usually inherit all the variables and methods of a particular class. So all these objects that we'll be creating inherit all the variables and methods of the class. So, Everything in C-sharp is associated with classes and objects along with its attributes and methods. So for example, in real life, we have something, we can take something like a car. So we can take something like a car. These represent an object. The car has attributes and we talk when we say attributes, this could also mean fields or even, yeah, we, we can have it as fields. Then we have something called methods. So for a car, fields or attributes could, could mean color, weight, weight of the car, while methods. The, what these are like activities or even things that a car can do. So it can drive or break. So these are things like, like, like drive or break. So to create a class, we usually use a class keyword. Creating a class you should use class keyword. So we can start by creating our car as a class. So you can define class, then we provide car. So this is our class. So in a class, we said it as attributes. And one of them was like color so we can so color our car could be of color red another attribute could be the model our car could be which model we can say toyota 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 Another attribute could be our car could be could be having weight. So this could be the integer or uh, let's say this one. Our car could be having weight. Let me just put in some weight there. 
Avita string. So Avita string. Then we say these as a our car weight could be ten thousand tons. So this is just like an example. So these are attributes of a class. So when a variable is declared directly in a class, it is always referred to as a field. So these are kind of uh, fields. So we can call these uh, fields. So it is not required, but it is a good practice to start with an uppercase first letter when naming classes. So it's also common that the name of the c -sharp file and the class matches. So you can actually create another uh, file here. You can just copy this so that we demonstrate. We can create here a class, a new class can, here. Then you name it as the name of the class will be car. So you can see, so we have a class called car. Then you can have our class inside this uh, file. So it is always good that you have your class name matching with the file name, but it is not required. So this is usually mandatory in Java. So we have created a class. So how do we create an object? So an object is created from a class. So as we had indicated before, a class is a template for creating objects. So we have already created the class named car. So now we can use this to create object. So to create an object of car, we specify the class name, followed by the object name, and use the keyword new. So here, I can create another class. So let me just define this. So I want to create a class. So to create a, an object of class, you specify the class name, which is car, then then followed by the name of the object. So this is the class name. The name of the object will be my car. You can give it any name. Then you use the new keyword, then the name of the class. So that is how you define it. So we can now want to output. So as, as you have seen here, what happens with a C sharp? An object inherits all the attributes of a class. So if I just want to, so everything that is being defined, the attributes of the class here are being inherited by our object, my car. So if I want to print this, I'll just type in console dot right line. Then I'll say my my car dot. You can see I can see my model, the color, and the weight. So it actually inherits all the attributes of a class. So I can I may want to print the color of the object. I can also want to print the model, and I can also want to print console the weight of the object. So all these model, color, and the weight are the attributes of the class. So if we execute this, so if we execute that, you can see we have, we have the, we have red Toyota under 10,000 tons. So all these are the attributes of a class. Not that we use the mycar.color to actually access the variables or the fields of the class. So you can create multiple objects of one class. So for example, we have this, this is our first object called my. This is our first object called my car. So I can have another object. 
So as we had indicated, a class is a, a template for creating objects. So from this template, we can use it to create as many objects as we want. So my second object, so I can say my car one, my car two. So this is my second object. I can also create another one, my third. It is a template. So you use it to, to have many objects as you want. So this will be my one, one. So you can also copy these and you can have as you can access the you can still access the output the attributes of the class. So if we do this again for the third object, you can see I can still access the attributes of the class. So you can also create an object of a class and access it in another class. So these are often used for better organization of classes. So one class has all the fields and methods while the other class holds the main method, the code to be executed, this one. So this is how you define uh, a class and an object in C Sharp. So something that you might have noticed, so we are, we have this uh, string here, yeah. but there previously you, you could actually use, there are certain things called uh, access modifiers. If you want this to be accessed outside the, the class, so you can have this as public. So if you define these, these are called access modifiers. So you can actually define it that way. And you can see you can still access it. So it actually specifies that the color variable, if you have this, the color variable, the model, and even the weight is accessible for other classes as well. So we learn more about access modifiers as we progress. So there are something called class members. So fields and methods inside a class are often called class members. So these fields and the methods inside a class. So in a class, let me just drop this. So we defined the attributes of a class. So there are also methods. So in a class, you can define a method, public, void. So this is a return type then we say drive so what a vehicle can do then these are method so inside this method we can say console the this car you can drive a car you can drive a car So you can drive a car. So this is one of the method. Then another method of a class was break. So you can stop a car. So these are the methods of a class and these are the attributes. So you have learned the variables inside a class are called fields and you can access them by creating an object of the class. So you can actually access this by creating an object, these objects, and by using the dot syntax so that you can access the variables of a, that is the attributes of a class. So we may want to create, so we have seen this, so, So we have learned the C-sharp methods. So methods, so as we have seen, so as we have seen, methods are used to perform certain actions. So these methods are used to perform 
certain actions. So you can actually, if you drive the car, then what will happen? So these are used to perform certain actions. Perform certain actions. So that is the essence of methods. They are used to perform certain actions. So methods normally belongs to a class and they define how an object of a class behaves. So these methods will define how the object of a class behaves. So just like the fields, you can access methods with the dot syntax as well. So you can actually access the methods of a class the same way we access the attributes. So however, you need to know that the method must be public. This one. So these are the ones I had indicated. They are called access modifiers. So it must be public for it to be accessed by the object. And, and the name must be followed by two parentheses. So this parentheses when defining a method. So we can access the method. So let's remain with just one object. So we had access the attributes of the class. So in case you want to access the, to call the method, how the object will behave. So it will access the, the method of a class. So we can actually do this, my car one dot, you want it to drive. So you can see, we can actually access the, the, the method of a class here. So this method will define certain, sorry, certain actions. It actually define the behavior of the, of the object. So when we declare the method as public and not static, the reason is a static me method can be accessed without creating an object of the class, while public methods can only be accessed by objects. So, So this is how you create an object, a class with an object, and as well as accessing the attributes of the class and the methods within class. So let's learn about constructors. So a constructor is a special method. So a constructor is a special method, just like these ones, that is used to initialize objects. So initialization of objects, in other words, is called instantiation. Instantiation. Inst so instantiation. So in <clears throat> so a constructor is a special method. So let's learn something called a constructor. So a constructor is a special method that is used to initialize objects. So the advantage of a constructor is that it can it is called when an object of a class is created. So you can see you have initializing objects for us to actually. This is when you are initializing objects. So instead of doing this every time, we can have a construct. So for example, in a class here, we can create a constructor. Constructor. So a constructor always shares the same name with the class, but now with lacking the return type. So we can call it a class that is car. Then, so this is a constructor inside a class. So inside this constructor, we can access the, we can access the attributes of the class. So we can say the model, the model of the class, can, we can even assign it. Now we can call this, we can now have this way. Instead of assigning it there, we just define the classes. Then we now assign the values. Red, no. The model is Toyota, then color, because red, 
then wait the cost ten thousand tons. So you can see these are constructor. We have assigned the values to the attributes. So we actually set the initial values here. Initial values of the attributes. So So when creating an object now, we don't need to do this. We can create an object of the car class. This will call the constructor. So if we, yeah, I think this is fine. So let's say this is Ford. So this will call the constructor and we'll get our values. So let me just remove this. So if we try to execute this code, we'll still get the values. Yes, there we are. So you can see we have red Toyota and 10,000 tons. So what it has done, it has, so when we, we instantiate here our object, it will call the constructor. Then it will get the initial values and pass it to our output. So now that the constructor name must match the class name. So this constructor name must match the class name. And it cannot have a return type. So the return type here is what you can see on the methods. The void can actually return an int, can return a string. But now when we say void, we are returning nothing. So this is how you define the methods. So, so these are constructor and you can know that it has the same name as a class. So that is always what you need to do. So a constructor is always called when the object is created here. When we create an object, so this when we are initializing or instantiating an object, then we, 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 we call the constructor here which will give us the initial value of the attributes. So all classes have constructors by default. And if you do not create a constructor in C Sharp, C Sharp will actually create one for you. So constructors save times, as you have seen how we have done it. So uh, we can actually pass parameters to constructors. So constructors can also take parameters, which is used to initialize fields. So for our case here, we can pass this string, we say T model. So we can pass the, the, the parameters, string as well, T color, then string as well, T weight. So we are passing the, con the, the the parameters. Then here, instead of us giving this string, we can assign it to our parameters here. These will be colors. Then these will be weight. So then, because we have now passed this constructor, you can see this will be having an error here because this car is trying to call our constructor and our constructor requires the parameters. So we need to pass these parameters when we are instantiating our object. So we'll pass it. So here we call it Toyota. Then we call it red. Then this was 10,000 tons. So you can see it is now good. So when we run this, will still has have our values great you can see we have red toyota and 10000 tons so we have passed parameters to our constructor and we have also passed the values when we are trying to instantiate our object so you can have as many parameters as you want when 
So just like other methods, constructors can also be overloaded by using different number of parameters. So you can see we have just uh, provided a lot of parameters. So another thing that we might need to learn about is what we call the access modifier. So by now, I think you are quite familiar with the public keyword. So this public keyword is what we are calling access modifiers. So the public keyword is an access modifier, which is used to set the access level. So let me just use it below here. So public keyword is used to set the access level or the visibility or the visibility of a class fields that is the attributes methods as well within a class and properties so we are using that to set the visibility of a class fields methods and properties so we have the public so these are called access modifiers there are different types of these modifiers. So these types are one is the one we have used that is public. So we have another one called private. Sorry. Private. Then we have another one called protected. Then we have another one called internal. So for the public, this one we the code the code is accessible it's actually accessible for all the classes for all the classes so for the private the code is only accessible as the word actually means is only accessible Within the within the same class, so you can access these either the fields, the methods, and even the properties of that class can only be accessed by the same class. But when we set it as public, it can be accessed outside that class. So for the protected, it is accessible within the class or in a class that is inherited that is inherited from that class. So it is a, within the class. So the difference between the private and the protected, this can now extends to those classes that inherits that class. So the internal, the code is only accessible within its own assembly. So it is only accessible within its own assembly but now from another assembly, from another assembly. So we can try to see this, all this from our code. So let's try to have these as private. You said when you set it as private, it can only be accessed within the same class. So private. So you can see we don't have any error because we are working within the same class. So we can access, so our object can still access the, the, the attributes of that class. So, so if we try to access, so if we come, remember we have a class called car. So if we try to access it from a public, we say, let me just go under program we say static program sorry program program so this is class sorry class program then i say static sorry 
static void return type main then um, I want to try to access our object here so you can say car you can see you can you can access the class my object is equals to new so we are trying to create our object from the class car so and I want to output this so our class expects some parameters you can copy it from here a constructor that is so I just call this then I call it my object so so you can see I can pass parameters to the to that class so if I try to run this let's see you can see we have an error so well, what is the error so let me try to run this so if we try to execute it you can see there were build errors so no so let's let's see the error so you see program has more than one entry point compiled so we have sorry i think that is the issue let me remove this let me copy this to here let me copy this here then i can say my object so that is it that's what i wanted so you can see from this one we can remove this one to only have one entry point so you can see i cannot access the color the model and the weight because it is private only being accessed by this class but we are accessing it from the program class so if we return this to public then this to public sorry public then this to public then we can access it from the program side yes we can see we can access the color model and weight so that is the essence of the modifiers so if we can have these as a, so we i think we, we've seen public and the and the private so that is the essence of the constructors the, and not construct the essence of the so that is the essence of the access modifiers so that is it guys for the objects and classes in c -sharp. so you can do more examples and you can learn more thank you and comment below and remember to subscribe bye see you in our next video